Really, someone never fails. And it is our God, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Chaplain Joff, for offer, offering me a place to be with you at this time. Really, I am starting to love Willits, as you know. And I hope we will not be divorcing our relationship. It is, uh, for me and my wife, is our third time, I guess. And this guy, Pastor Erwin, is the one. And Chaplain Joe is the one who invited Pastor Erwin. And now Pastor Erwin is trying to convince me to stay here. Well, Thank you. It is not a bad thing. It's really wonderful, beautiful. Not only the people. As you could see, Will, it's a small place. But when you are in a small place, in a quiet place like this, what can you feel? Yeah, I just walked yesterday in the wooden, the wooded park where I ate a lot of blackberries. And the blackberry thorn was not so friendly to me. Break my finger, but anyway, that's probably part of you need to remember me. In life, there are always breaking moments, right? But the sweetness and savory taste of a blackberry will nourish us. Especially in life. How do you feel now, my brothers and sisters? I know uh, you might be in a situation wherein you fully accepted God and Savior. You're fully established in your faith. Some may be in constant confusion where to find themselves. Some may be not believing in the sovereignty of God in his life. But it's a good thing that God welcomes you here. This is his house. This is his home. So what only we can do is welcome him in, it, in our heart. Welcome God and accept the amazing grace of God in our lives through the merits of the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen to that. Yeah, but our goal, as we are continuing in our pathway to come to God, is not to be disturbed by the experiences and struggles along the way. As we can see, the pathway to the mountain that we want to conquer Seemingly, there are a lot of potholes, a lot of struggles along the way, and maybe in our way going to the foothill of the mountain, the experiences are not so awesome. But when we don't stop and continue, not by our might nor by our power, we will be there. We will be and someone is waiting for us. And we are not alone along the way. God is with us. Now I want to share you and I want God to invite the presence of the Holy Spirit in you. It's up to you to welcome the Holy Spirit in your heart. I want us to ponder the conversion of Apostle Paul on the road of Damascus. This is a familiar story. Sometimes familiarity breeds something not good, right? When we are friends to someone and we are so familiar, even the dust in the corner of our house we know, sometimes we don't appreciate that kind of familiarity. But God wants 
us to be familiar with him. And Paul, in his life, was familiar with God, but in a different terms. He believes that God is giving him the role as a protector, defender of the Jewish faith. That's why, determined in his heart, when after the crucifixion of Christ and the apostles were scattered, but seemingly the grace of God doesn't stop there to vanquish the faith in Jesus. So a lot of conversions were happening. And politically, it was not good in that area to see those Christians emerge and they are continuing to be big in numbers as conversion rises from city to city. So this man whose name as Paul was Saul at the time was determined to crush what he believed is the opposition to his Jewish faith. He was schooled from the school of Gamaliel, a very renowned and famous Jewish teacher. And in his uh, young years of his study, he emerged, he emerged as one of the finest students. And coupled with his being a Roman citizen, he has the credential to have both worlds. From the protection of Roman government to the knowledge about Jewish faith and tradition, well, he surely is the man of the time. Young, adventurous, talented, and courageous. So that was Paul. But deep in his heart is the desire to live in accordance what he believes is right. Do you feel that? My brothers and sisters, do you feel that you want to live your life in accordance what you believe is right? That is right, right? But suddenly in the heart of Paul, that is not true to himself. After encountering this incident, I want to read it in Acts chapter 9. I want to read from verse 1 so we can really understand what was going on here. Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Soul, soul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus whom you are persecuting, he replied. God replied, now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. There is that blinding encounter, blinding experience of Paul when he had that kind of implementing his murderous threats to eliminate or to imprison those whom he believed they are threat to the security of the Roman Empire, and they are a threat to the purity of the Jewish religion. But this encounter blinded him. But we could recognize that before this encounter, Paul was having already the darkness in his life. 
the darkness that he believed is enlightening him. The darkness that he believes is the light to his life to pursue on what he wanted to do. Is it bad to protect the Jewish religion? Back then there is religious freedom, but it depends upon how you practice the religion back then. Paganism is well accepted to establish, so you know about the Roman gods. Jewish faith, Judaism is accepted, though they are under the Roman regime, but in a bit of suspicion that people will do something to threat the authority, the Roman government is so fast to do actions to eliminate the threat. That's how they grew, that's how they control, that's how they maintain their power back then. And so that kind of thing, because Saul was a Roman citizen, so he supports and upholds the Roman government uh, authority. And as I've said, Saul was schooled in the synagogue and he was knowledgeable by heart about the Jewish law, customs, and traditions. So that is his uh, credential. Those are his credentials. But now, uh, the night before the Damascus road trip, bringing his men, deep in his heart is he would eliminate those people. But someone is planning to. He didn't see what someone is planning. And then along the Damascus Road that someone created the light. Probably that light is the one created the world. And blinded him. And at that very moment, he asked, and he heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And Saul asked, who are you, Lord? And the voice said, yeah. Paul, Saul confirmed that it is Jesus Christ that he is persecuting at the time. So Saul became blind. And what do you think he was feeling at the time? He fell into the ground. Now he was useless, powerless, can't do anything because of blindness. I know how it is to be blind, not me personally. I have a blind family member, my sister, for many years. She's not, she's older than me for many years since uh, her high school days. She got contracted with Something in her eyes, like what you call that? Cataract. Cataract. Cataracts. Cataracts, and it spread it to both eyes and surgery. Didn't make her eyes better, and she got blind until now. But the good thing about her is, though physically her vision is lost, but spiritually she is in the light. She was converted to accept Jesus as her savior after I was converted. And that decision of hers to accept the light is giving her purpose and meaning in her life. And now she is actively 
serving God in her capacity to do, always attending church services regularly, and she is one of the encouraging factor for the brethren in our local church back home is experiencing. Yeah, blind people sometimes, they are blind physically, but their heart is so full of light that they can see God and they can see their purpose in their lives. And now this is the time for Apostle Paul, for Saul, to determine what will be his next step. Well, someone took him in the, what you call, secret room or wherever and told him to wait till someone comes, till someone comes to help him. And then, you know who came? What's his name? Uh, that person got the vision from Jesus himself, from the Lord. Hey, uh, you're busy right now. I have a mission for you to do. What is that, Lord? Well, you need to go to Saul. Oh, no, 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 I know him. I fear him because he approved the stoning of Stephen. And he approved the killing of other Christians. Don't send me there, Lord. Don't send me to Saul. Well, you need to do it. And do this thing. So, because of his obedience, Ananias is his name, right? Uh, he went there and do what God said him to do. And introduce himself to Ananias. And Saul accepted him, and from there, Ananias prayed for him to restore his vision. And Ananias said, For you, Saul, to be filled by the Holy Spirit. That's the most important thing I see in this kind of relationship. It's not only the physical service that we can do to a person, but for a person that we help to receive the Holy Spirit and be filled by it. That is amazing. And do you know the meaning of the Hebrew? In Hebrew, the name Ananias. In Hebrew, it is named Hananiah, which the meaning is God is gracious. God is gracious to us because of our friends. I want to humbly tell you that I am happy to have a friend like those. Because in my life, in our lives, of seemingly non-stop trials, we could say suffering, tribulation, because... Uh, the favorable taste of life that we want to is not, was not being uh, savored by us. Though our faith is strong, but as we are learning in our Sabbath school lesson, pain and suffering is real. Pastor Erwin invited me to fill up the position that I can perform as well like what he was doing. Not knowing that I could be able to do the task for a long time. But when he offered me that, when I accepted it and applied for the chaplaincy job, I got accepted right away and lo and behold, it was my field to play. This is where I want to belong, to serve people. As a role of a chaplain, you know, it's kind of pastoral, ministerial, a psychologist, you can say, to offer support emotionally and spiritually, to offer comfort, to offer interpersonal relationship, to better their lives. And that is what happened and this is what is happening. To always come to see if there is a people like soul to be made like Paul. So how many people 
in our circumstance or in our uh, fold are needing the presence of Ananias. So, Paul, Saul was the main character in this Acts of chapter 9, but it is because too of a guy named Ananias who was very instrumental. So you could see in our church, there is what we call the uh, protagonist, like the main character, but because of our presence, the main character really shines because of us. The behind the curtain characters that are seemingly just waiting for the right call from God to do their work. So we are a team, a team here supporting each other. And so, soul vision was restored. And when he got up, we know what happened to his ministry. In his ministry, we could see the very the fast, the rapidly advancing of God's work and his words. It is because of Apostle Paul. Coupled with the interest and uh, untiring services too of the apostles who were with Jesus before the crucifix crucifixion. So those apostles converted many and Apostle Paul converted so many people in the then known uh, Christian world. And we are so thankful of the Damascus Road incident. The aftermath is being shared to us, right? We experience that kind of restorative, redemptive, redeeming experience of Paul, that salvific experience which we are now experiencing. When you read the book of Acts, when you read the book of Romans, don't separate your thought from Paul because it is through his experience in life and it's through his struggles, through his darkness, that he achieved the light through his encounter with the Lord. So Damascus Road for me is one of those memorable freeways, memorable byway in which we can consider ourselves to be part of that, not to be among the persecutors, but among the converted Christians. So my dear brothers and sisters, Ananias told what he was told by God to do, get up and go into the city. And that is the uh, advice to, to Paul when God said, go to the city and you need to wait for the advice that you need to do. So we know for three days he was blind and after his vision was restored, After that, there was news on that part of the world that there is the guy named Saul who changed his name to Paul that caused conflict stirred among the localities. And before he was a persecutor, now he was one with whom he was persecuting. So Paul, though he was so, you know, reluctant to get inside the synagogue, starts to preach about Christ the way. He started to preach Christ and now we are enjoying the wisdom of Paul through his evangelism through his writings, his epistles, and through 
his services. And we are always owing it to Paul because the simple verse like, I can't do anything without Christ. I can do anything with Christ, right? Who gives me strength? It is from Paul. It is from Paul. But what he meant, I can do anything. Don't think that it is always pleasant. For, for Paul's experiences, those things are full of suffering. They are full of beatings. Some bad experiences when she was on the ship, shipwrecks, imprisonment. He says, I can do anything through Christ who gives me strength. That strength of Paul, my brothers and sisters, we need to. It's not the strength that we can gain physically. So us to enjoy our lives in pleasure. But to be strong in the Lord to face life's adversities. Now we don't have any persecutions that we are experiencing right now because we are peaceful. Seemingly we are living in a life of pleasure, in a bed of roses. But time will come that all of those things is nothing because we might be experiencing suffering, the real suffering to a joyful experience with God. So my brothers and sisters, at this time, spiritual healing, we need to crave. Physical healing, you know, sometimes our physical body strength is diminishing due to a lot of factors, illness, diseases, aging. So before we are Powerful, like what say my friend, when we were young, 24 hours of job, 24 hours of game, and not sleeping at night is possible, and on the next day, you could still do things. But now our physical body is no longer like that, right? Yeah, before I was able to just split second, even though it's 4 o'clock in the morning, hurriedly, Rushing to my work, just, oh, it's 4 o'clock in the morning. In five minutes, I'm all dressed up and go to my work. But now it's not. So we have to consider our physical body is coming to an end of its utmost power, at its utmost flexibility. But emotionally, spiritually, we can recharge our power to its utmost Supercharged. How can we do that, my brothers and sisters? We have God in us. We can do all things to Christ who gives us strength. And we're not getting old even though we're old now. How could that be happening? How could you be not getting old? Well, in 2 Corinthians 5.17, if anyone is in Christ, he is what? A new creation. Wow, brand new creation every day. But that brand new creation is not to be felt and seen physically. You can see in me, something somewhere is not full, right? But my heart is full. That's it. That's emotional from God and that's spiritual. If we are spiritually filled by God's Holy Spirit, just like Paul, after that blindness experience, we could just get up and face the world, whatever challenges we can see. In life, we need to face what is before us, to advance. You cannot face your enemy Constantly by backing up because that is not the strategy in a, in a war situation. Well, sometimes backing up is a good strategy, but you want to control and conquer the defense. 
the strategy. So what you can do is you move advance. And when you face what is in front of you, though it is a Goliath kind of thing, just remember you are a David in God's eyes. And step by step, inch by inch, we could advance until we are there already conquering the stronghold. That's why we are called to be a new creation inside us. So our vitality is still there. Our strength is still there, which will remind us not by might nor by power, but by spirit. Amen. While I was uh, visiting my patient, a caregiver approached me and inquired about his well-being. And he said, oh, everything is not good. How come? You've been working here. Be thankful that you have a job. Well, it's not good. It's not good. Many problems in life I am experiencing. What is that? Well, my relationship to my wife, my children, something like that. Well, I told him, maybe brother, you are in a situation where you are facing darkness. Oh yeah. So what do you do to solve your problem? Well, I just drink. And when I drink, I forget things, I sleep. And when you get up in the next morning, what do you feel? The same problem, things like that. So I advise him, change your strategy. Don't drink, don't drink. Well, if you want to drink, drink moderately, but you have to face your problem, not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit of God. If you pray and ask God's blessings to your life, if you ask God's wisdom to your life, then things in your life will change to make your life better. And he was so thankful about that. Oh, I haven't heard about it. So a lot of people, my brothers and sisters, are having their darkness in their hearts, in their life. But no Ananias is coming to there. And Ananias will be coming only to those people who are in need if those Ananias are hearing the calling of God in their lives. Be an Ananias to someone else. Be the grace of God because God is gracious. So my brothers and sisters, though you are familiar with the experiences of Apostle Paul, but be in touch with God so you could be like a blessing, an instrument to spread the news. Uh, yeah, Paul said, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. And that should be our aim to. Thank you so much, my brothers. As I've told you, I'm starting to love village. But important to that is to uh, have that fiery desire to love our God. Because that's the very reason why we are enjoying this church. This is the very reason, guys, the very reason why we are here. Don't give any reason other than God why we are here. Because God is the very reason of our own existence. God bless you, and I hope we will see you in heaven pretty time soon. It's up to your decision to accept that invitation of God to our lives. Our Father God, thank you so much for your presence in our midst. Thank you for filling my, our hearts with the assurance of your grace and mercy. May we constantly see the light in front of us to restore the physical blindness that we are experiencing. And may our vision be always spiritually inclined to see the beauty 
of our God and how to be a wonderful children of our Lord. May you bless this church now and forever to be a beacon of light in this part of the world. Thank you so much for hearing and answering our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.